here we go. Underway, Isaac Dordelaine. Diego Saldre, immediate double pull. Looking to spin right underneath is Isaac Deuterlein. Look at the high energy out of Isaac right off the bat, too. Wrapping up the foot. This is the move he used to finish Sammy Nagai in the semifinal. Look at that extension from Soja, though, keeping everything. He's keeping good control of that sleeve and the pant grip, which kind of uh, isolates Isaac's movement. And this could result in them coming back up to the feet losing that full lock position that Isaac has now if there is continued action. Isaac Dorelli really actually trying to arch that foot lock, trying to buy time for him on the double pull. If he's in a submission, then the double pull doesn't break because he is in a submission. Right. But the moment that Sodre is able to extract his foot out of that position, I imagine the referees will stand them up. Yeah, right away, I think, or if, he, if they think he's out of danger. But this is a very interesting defense from Sojer. I think it's very smart to continue to hold that sleeve, hold that foot, because Isaac can't use his right foot to either come inside for a hook or any kind of extension to push on the hip. So it's very hard for him to extend his hips and really bridge into this leg without the right foot. And then same thing as right arm is being controlled. So uh, very difficult to continue the ankle lock but it kind of keeps him in this stalemate here because the submission is still on, but Isaac can't continue the finish. See, so just trying to test the waters there. Can I pull my foot out? The answer, currently, no. <laughs> Isaac Durlin is holding it with his left arm so tight, fighting so hard for that angle. You see him bringing his legs in just a little bit. He also has, Soldier also has his left leg extended to kind of keep that distance, keep that space. See, because Isaac's left foot is in perfect position, but his right leg could potentially come over on top of Sojay's right hip, right? And then he can get some extension there. There's a, there's a couple of other options, but since he doesn't have access to his leg, none of those are going to happen yet. I hear a lot of people in the crowd kind of uh, egging the referees on to stand them back up because we are over two minutes into the match now, and we've been here almost the whole time. But because there's submission in play, they are not supposed to stand them up. Isaac Dwayne, one of two American black belts featured in the finals here of the IBJJF World Championship today. The actual next match after this will be Tai Ruotolo. Now Diego Sodre really uh, working to bring his right knee up. Dodolane has kept this, this footlock so tight. You can even see how high up his left arm is on his own lapel. Just keeping the tension on Diego Sodre's foot. It's everything Doidelin can do to keep Diego Sodre's knee in the right place. Now the referee is going to stand them up. So we're going to get a little bit of a reset here. Penalty each. Usually that happens in the first 20 seconds of, of the double pull, but Isaac Doidelin keeping that footlock. Three minutes so and tense. 15 seconds, right, into that footlock battle. We see another double pull here. Isaac probably looking to get a better bite on that ankle. Spinning right underneath immediately once again and getting a full inversion. You see, look at the intensity on Isaac Deuterlein to really working hard for this inversion to go underneath. He wants this so bad. His first time being in the finals and he does not want to waste the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, he has a mainstay here, right? He has been so close so many times. I can imagine the focus that he's feeling right now with six minutes left to go, even scoreboard. And they're gonna come back up. We're gonna have another penalty for each opponent. This will result in an advantage on each side. And as a reminder for those watching, we have a third penalty that could potentially come into play, which would give two points. But after that, the fourth penalty is a DQ. Third Both penalty. athletes keying on the double guard pull over and over again. Yeah, definitely looking for bottom position here, absolutely. Oh, Dwayne really needs to be careful. Nearly exposing his back. Diego Sodre has a firm grip on the pants. Seeming as though uh, Doidelin has corrected his hips for the time being, but Diego Sodre was firmly underneath the hips. And due to that, though, he was awarded the advantage. So now, 
Diego Sodre is in top position. So that's a bit of a tricky thing here because he saw the back exposure. He looked for the back. He didn't get it. He didn't even score an advantage for the back. But now he's in top position, which is not really where he wanted to be. Right? So that was a little bit of a risky thing. But now he does come in. Heavy, heavy passing. Biggest goals of movement side to side. But Isaac is so good with his lasso position. We're going to see what Isaac Dordalene is going to use his lasso for here. Diego Sodre with his... Uh, I would say throughout the run he's had in this tournament, signature low stance to pass the lasso guard and down by one advantage as we get just barely over the halfway point of this, the featherweight final. I look how attached Isaac is to Zodre as he starts moving around, had a, a little bit of a look at maybe attacking an arm or a uh, triangle there. So he tried to posture up and Isaac just came with him. Big collar grip here on the right side. Beautiful control of the posture here by Isaac Dodolin. Sodre seemingly out of danger though. It is a, it's very interesting his position with his right hand. You see him trying to break that grip on the wrist, potentially go back to the foot, try to push that foot down, start to step over this way. But Isaac has great control of that arm. Over four minutes remaining, and Sodre does have a slight advantage lead due to coming up on the guard pole. Working for a big inversion using that double plotter grip is Isaac Dutterlane. Possibly looking to expose the back or maybe a sweep there, but the base of Diego Sodre coming into play. Yeah, look at how Sodre uses his left knee to kind of cut and stay in the middle when he feels in danger. It's important to note as well, Diego Sodre cannot afford to be inactive. They right. each have two penalties. If either athlete stalls for any reason and receives a penalty, it will award two points to the other competitor. Yeah, that's a great point. That is a game changer in a match like this with three minutes left, that's for sure. Oh, it is a tight battle. A reset to the center. And it's interesting, you know, Isaac Dorland, he always has a very technical game, but in this match in particular, he looks so dialed into me, just keeping everything super glued tight where he needs it. We see some big, uh, some big control here, potentially maybe coming over the top with that left scoop grip on the leg. Almost got the lapel pass through and then Soldier ripped it back out. So no lapel grip here. We see Soldier trying to get some disconnection. Sodre seemed to really not like that lapel switch, but now passing to the right side, seeming to get a little heavier here, inching tighter. As he does an excellent job at using that right leg under the armpit to off balance Sodre to his right side, kind of knock him over. And it's so important to keep your partner off balance when you're looking for sweeps and submissions. They have to be forced to open up a limb or an off balance or they have to shift to get some of these scores going. Which is why it's so interesting that Sodri stays in that squatted position that you were talking about, Jake, uh, that we've seen all weekend. Another big scoop grip here. Let's see if he's successful in passing the lapel this time. Not quite, but he is going underneath. There is some exposure on the arm, but... Sodre uh, pulls it out. Sodre doing a great job. His right arm was preventing the full inversion of Isaac Deuterlein. Such a tense moment. Isaac Deuterlein trying to add his name to the very short list of American Black Belt World Champions. If he were to win, we'd officially be able to count with two hands the <laughs> number of Americans who have won a Black Belt World title. Absolutely incredible. And this is such a precarious position here with the knee in the middle because it can be a great way to lead into a knee cut, but it can also get you tilt swept. But here we see Isaac now switching sides, reaching for that heel, trying to pull the heel of Sodre in for that deep deal of Kiva. Starting to seem like Diego Sodre. Not a lot of movement out of Diego Sodre and disengaging. Has to be careful not to get called for stalling here, like you said earlier, Jake. Less than a minute on the clock, and only an advantage separates these two. In a, in, a, in, a, in a moment like this, in the finals of the World Championship, it's the inactivity that actually makes my heart beat faster. Yes. Now 
we see some more action from Sodre here, getting a little more aggressive on the pass. That's a very intelligent move too, Kendall, because it looked, we were starting to get a little nervous that maybe he wasn't starting enough action, but Isaac Tortolain now doing everything he can in for underneath. Will he come up on a sweep? You can see the intensity on his face, 25 seconds. He is going for it, he's going for it. He's going for it, will he come up? so long, such an emotional win. Finally, an IBJJF Black Belt World Champion. You can see the emotions on the face of Diego Saldre, but Isaac Dordelaine.